If you love shopping at Dollar Tree, you're gonna love today's video. I have all new Dollar Tree DIYs to share with you. When I was shopping around at Dollar Tree, I found this candle warmer. I love the shape on it and I thought it would be perfect to make a jewelry tray. So then I went over to the plate section and I found these square plates. I got a larger one and a smaller one. Now I haven't put together a jewelry organizer in a while, but these are great to have sitting out on your vanity. They're also great to have in your closet. You can just throw jewelry on there and I have several that I've used for years. So to put this together, you wanna make sure your plate is completely clean. Then you're you're going to add E6000 to the bottom of your candle warmer. And then do your best to place it in the center of your plate. Then I'm going to add in some additional E6000 to the top of the candle warmer and I'll place the plate on top. Now with E6000, you want to let it sit overnight before you add in your jewelry and here's how it turned out. One of my favorite crafting items is my macrame that I pick up off of Amazon. I buy it in this huge spool. I'll link it for you down below, but I wanted to do a macrame vase. So I picked up two smaller vases. That's one of the problems at Dollar Tree is you can't really get large vases. So I'm gonna show you how to take these two smaller vases and make them into a larger one. After I remove the tags, I put some E6000 in the top of my larger vase. Then I took the smaller one and I set it in the middle. You kind of have to move it around so it sits just precisely. And then I let this sit and dry overnight. I didn't touch it. I didn't do anything to it because you really want that E6000 to bond together before you continue on with your craft. So the next day when I came back to my vase, it was ready to add the macrame. Now with this project, I'm gonna be adding macrame in a swirl pattern along my vase. I started down at the bottom. I really didn't have any plan to this. Now, one of the keys when you're adding the macrame on is you don't want your hot glue to show in the clear sections. So I created lines, I created swirls. I was just trying to fill up the space. So I did that all around the bottom and I just tried to create natural formations. I really didn't have a plan in mind. I carried that up to the middle section. I went all the way to the top of my face, adding in hot glue to hold it in place. And again, making sure I used as little hot glue as possible, but still still getting it to stick to the vase. Once you get to the end, just cut off your macrame. You can style it in your home with your other home decor. And I think for $2.50 plus the macrame, this is an awesome vase. One of my favorite card games to play with my girls is Skipbo. And I'm so excited that I can now play the game on my phone just by downloading the Skipbo app. And I wanna thank Skipbo for sponsoring today's video. If you've never played before, Skipbo is a 50 year old card game from the makers of Uno, which is Mattel. Players use skill and strategy to create stacks of sequentially numbered cards. I love that Skipbo is a family friendly card game that does require some skill, but don't worry, once you get the hang of it, it's a perfect game for relaxing at the end of the day. So here's how to play Skipbo. Once you download the app, you take turns with an opponent. You wanna be the first player to play play every card in your stockpile by playing all of your cards in numerical order from one to 12. At the beginning of every turn, you'll draw back up five cards automatically in your hand. And you wanna make sure you clear all of your stock cards first in order to win the game. I love playing Skipbo whenever I go on trips because it doesn't require any internet, so you'll have access to it when you're in remote areas. Skipbo is a great game to play at the end of the day while you're relaxing or if you're sitting in a waiting room. The cool thing about playing online is I don't have to wait for everyone in my family to be ready to play the game. I can play it anytime on my phone. So head to your app store, download Skipbo and start playing. I always love to show you guys a great wall art idea you can do from Dollar Tree. One of the times I was shopping at Dollar Tree, I found these 11 by 14 wood canvases. And if you flip them on the back, they make the perfect frame. And when I saw these, I knew they would make great wall art. Now I wanna tell you guys, these were in the Dollar Tree Plus section. So they were $3, I picked up two of them. I used the color Golden Oak, which is just kind of one of my medium stains. So I'm gonna start off by staining about half of the piece, maybe two 
thirds and I put the stain on with a foam brush and I immediately wipe it off with a paper towel. If you want your color to be a little bit richer, a little bit deeper, just let your stain sit on there longer before you wipe it off. I let that stain dry. Then I came in for the next part. One of the cool things about the Dollar Tree Plus section is they are actually selling paint pour paints. That was a lot, <laughs> but they are awesome. They're $3 and they work so well. I know some of the acrylic paints at Dollar Tree are not the best, but I really love these. Now I have maybe four or five colors. I'm going to be getting all of the colors because they are awesome. But what I'm going to be using for this one is I wanted it to be really dark. I wanted it to have a cool contrast. So I'm mainly going to be using black, I'm also going to use some silver and white. Now, one of the things I mix in with my paint pour paints, this is kind of optional because I feel like these paints are super runny, but I use it to just kind of make my paint go farther is a product that I got from Hobby Lobby and it's called a pouring medium. This is actually not a paint pour. I'm calling this a drip paint project. What you're going to do is put in a little bit of your pouring medium, then put in whatever paint colors you want. So I'm going to go in heavy with the black, I'm also going to put in some silver and then some white. Next, I'm going to sit my paint pours into a container at kind of at an incline. So I found something I could put underneath that would just make it at a slight incline. That way, all of my paint is going to drip that way and I don't have to worry about it getting on my stained area. So once both of the pieces are in there, I'm going to just run the paint along the edge. Now I wanted the paint to be up a little bit higher on one of them and a little bit lower on the other. And so I just made sure I didn't put any paint past that line. Now, after I initially put it in, I made sure that the paint went over to the edge as well as the sides. I also wanted to add in a little bit more white, a little bit more silver, just to give the pieces a little bit more contrast. But that's the cool thing. Whenever you pour paint or drip paint, you can continue to add colors until you like it. Now with paint pours, you want to make sure that you let this sit overnight. And I actually came back in a couple hours later and kind of poured the paint off to the side to make sure I didn't have it pooling at the edges. Now, since this is flat on the back to hang it on your wall, you're just going to want to use some command strips and hang it on the wall. But I think these look awesome. The pieces only cost me $3 each. And then I had materials that I used with them that I already had on hand. If you're a crafter who loves to DIY, consider joining my Facebook group. It's called Liz Fimic DIY. We'll put a link to it down in the description box. It's a great community to share your DIYs and get feedback. Now for this next DIY, I actually have a piece from Ikea as well as Dollar Tree. I really haven't done an Ikea DIY video in a long time, so let me know if you guys would like to see that. But Ikea has a lot of different light fixtures that are really affordable that you can use in a bunch of different DIYs. I picked up this wire Ikea lamp shade that I'm going to use in this next project. I also picked up a clear vase from Dollar Tree. So with my clear vase, I'm going to spray paint it with two coats of a matte black spray paint. Then the cool thing about this vase is it actually fits down into that wire lampshade. So I'm gonna put a little bit of E6000 on the bottom of the vase, and then I'm gonna set it into my lampshade. I'll let that dry completely overnight. Then you can style it as a really cool and funky vase. You can put in any florals that you like. I love all the wood craft items that you can find at Dollar Tree. In the Dollar Tree Plus section, I found this round tray that I thought was really cute. I also picked up these floral picks. I got three of them. I thought this would be a fun combination for a DIY. So I started by adding some painter's tape to the outside of my wood piece because I wanted to make sure I could keep that wood on the outside. Then I placed the wood picks in the middle, trying to get them as flat as possible because I was gonna be adding in spray paint. 
Next, I took the tray outside and I'm gonna be using a blue spray paint. And whenever you're trying to spray paint a stencil, you wanna try to make sure the spray paint just kind of skims over the top. So try not to go at an angle, which is a little tough with this piece because I had to do the edges. And don't overdo it with the spray paint. Just do the amount you need to get the job done and then stop there. So I just put the spray paint over the top and then I let it dry completely. Then I removed the stencils. I always like cross my fingers here to make sure that it looks okay. Next, I removed the tape from the outside. Some of the blue paint did bleed over the side, but to remove that, all you have to do is get a piece of sandpaper and you're just going to sand it down until the paint's removed. That's an easy way to make sure you clean up the edges. Felt like it turned out pretty good. Now I will say where the picks were, those didn't look that great. So I actually took a little bit of spray paint with a foam brush and I just dabbed over where the stems were. I felt like you could only see one of them so I really didn't need the stems. Now on the bottom, I wanted to add some legs to this tray and there's a new spring item out. There are these little tiny wood pots that are so adorable and I thought these are gonna make great legs. So I picked up two packs of them and I hot glued three of the legs to the bottom of my tray. And here's a look at how the tray turned out. If you've made it this far on the video, thank you so much for watching. Comment the word of the day, which is Dollar Tree. So one of the new items I wanted to test out was this air dry clay that they have in the crafter square. I think it's a pretty big size. It's 8.8 .8 ounces. And I love that it's kind of that terracotta color. So I went online at some of the high end stores and I found this really pretty scallop bowl on Pottery Barn's website. And I thought, let's try to recreate something similar to that. So I took the air dry clay out and I started by just rolling it out. I didn't have a rolling pin. So I ended up using a dowel that I found. I spent a little bit of time looking around my craft room for something and that dowel I thought would work great. So I used the dowel to roll it out so I could get it maybe about a centimeter in thickness. Since the Pottery Barn Bowl was very free-formed, I wanted it to look very natural. So I used just a Cricut tool that I had to create kind of a scallop edge and make a circle. Then I got just a bowl that I had on hand. You need some kind of bowl to shape your item. This was just a thrifted glass bowl that I had. I added some cling wrap to the top of it because I wasn't sure if this was going to stick on. I will say it didn't really stick onto the glass, so you probably don't need the cling wrap, but it's kind of a good idea just in case. And I set my air dry clay over the top of it. Now on the air dry clay, it says that it dries within 24 hours. So I let mine sit for about maybe two hours. I noticed that I was getting some cracks in it. So I came back in with a little bit of water and then I just used the water to kind of smooth out the edges. And I have to say it really did a good job of smoothing them out. Then I put the bowl back onto my glass container and I let that sit overnight. Now I've removed it the next day and I have to say, you guys, I'm a little disappointed. It does have some cracks in it. Like you can see here, there's a crack, but for the most part, it looks really good and these bowls always have a really rustic appearance. Now, the only thing I can't figure out, should I keep it this terracotta color or spray paint it? So let me know what you guys would do. Would you paint it or leave it? I've used a couple of clays at Dollar Tree and they haven't been my favorite, but this is only $1.25. So for $1.25, you can make a really cool rustic bowl. Dollar Tree has a new line out for spring called their farm line. And we actually got to our Dollar Tree when they were putting these items out. So I'm hoping you're able to find some of these items, but they had these like long boards that I thought were really cute. They were kind of like a, almost like a shiplap board. So I'm going to be using one of those boards for this next project. They also have two packs of wood slices. You guys, I've been waiting forever for Dollar Tree to have these. So I'm so excited. So I picked up two packs of the wood slices and then another item that I bought recently are these rose 
rose gold clips. So I'm gonna be using all these items for this next project. I thought this would make a really cute wall hanger for maybe children's art or pictures. So I'm gonna start by placing the wood circles onto my board. And they were kind of different sizes, so I had to figure out which ones I thought would work best. Now I want this to be really sturdy, so when I want something to be really sturdy, I use E6000 instead of hot glue. So I'm gonna put E6000 on the back of the wood slices and then press them down to my wood. I'm gonna do the same thing, adding E6000 to my rose gold clamps, and I'll put those in the center of my wood slices. I'll let this dry overnight, and then you can hang it with the hanger that's already provided. You could put in art or pictures or anything you like. I love going to Dollar Tree and finding new items they have out for the season. These flower little clamps are so cute for pictures, but they're not really my style. I wanted to make them a little bit more modern. You can really change anything with spray paint. So I'm gonna paint them with spray paint. One, I'm gonna do a cream. The other one, I'm gonna do like a terracotta. And then the last one, I'm gonna do a brown. I'm gonna do two coats on the front and the back. And I'm using my favorite spray paint turntable to kind of move them around. This is so awesome. I'll link it for you down in the description box, but I use it all the time when I spray paint. Once that dry, I wanted to give them a little bit of spackling, a little bit of texture. So I have this stone spray paint that I'm gonna add. And this is a cool thing. You really don't need that much. You're just gonna spray it on. And if you wanna add more, you can, but really a little goes a long way. And I'll let these dry completely. You can add in pictures, notes, whatever you like, but I just think they look so cute. It's your turn to vote. Comment down below which of these DIYs was your favorite. Don't be afraid to try that project you've always wanted to try. And remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. I hope you subscribe because I want to see you back here. Bye.